In this video, we're going to review this 65-inch Sony A80J OLED, occasionally comparing it to the similarly priced LG C1, as well as Sony's flagship A90J Master Series OLED. Keep watching. Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HDTV Test here. Our 65-inch Sony A80J review unit uses a conventional OLED panel, rather than the latest, more efficient one implemented on the step-up A90J Master Series OLED, as verified by not only the Spectral Power Distribution or SPD, but also significantly less pink tint of axis. Just like the A90J, the Bravia A80J turned off its white subpixels near black, resulting in significantly less near black flashing artifacts than pre-2021 Sony OLEDs, both on test patterns and in heavily compressed viewing material such as this footage from Game of Thrones when it was first aired. Compared to our 55-inch A90J review sample, the Sony A80J we tested had better near-black gamma tracking with a smoother transition coming out of black. But even after calibration and mitigation, shadow detail remained slightly brighter and compressed when compared against rival OLED TVs which provided more granular calibration controls near black. That said, outside of a side-by-side -side comparison for reference, most viewers probably would still be happy with the clean near-black handling on the Sony A80J. SDR color accuracy was excellent after calibration, with an average delta error of below 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, and no inaccuracies exceeding delta error 2, contributing to cinematic colors which faithfully adhered to the artistic intent in real-world content. Even with motion flow disabled, the Sony A80J currently applied 4-4 pull-down to present 24 frames per second films without telescenic judder. If you are one of those who are sensitive to the mouse stutter inherent in 24p content, which is made more obvious by OLED's near-instantaneous pixel response time, you can bump up smoothness under the Motion Flow Custom submenu, although beware that the higher the setting, the more SOPRA effect or SOE you'll introduce. For higher frame rates such as 50p or 60p content, Disabling motion flow would result in a motion resolution of 300 lines, which is typical of a sample and hold display. Deploying Sony's motion flow smoothness frame interpolation more than double motion resolution to 650 lines, which could be increased even further to 1080 lines or higher by engaging the clearness control that activates variable intensity black frame insertion or BFI. The higher the clearness value, the clearer the motion, but also the dimmer the picture with more visible flicker. So we think the sweet spot for watching SDR sports content with the best balance of motion clarity and brightness is clearness 1 together with smoothness 2. Before moving on to talk about the film mode control which is labelled as Cinemotion on non-European models, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crampton Moore for sponsoring this video. If you're thinking about getting a new TV, even if it's not the Sony A80J, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113 Two double four double six zero seven. Mention HDTV test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. New for 2021, Sony has reintroduced the film mode low setting, which worked well to eradicate the occasional stutter in 50 Hz broadcast programs caused by overly aggressive film cadence detection with film mode set to high. However, since streaming apps on Sony televisions still operate at 60 Hz. It is imperative to set film mode to high when watching Netflix, Disney Plus, and other apps on the TV to recover 24p frames and remove 3 2 pull down judder. Upscaling was first rate, retrieving clean detail from this SMPT RP133 test card without excessive ringing or fizziness. As we first pointed out in our review of the flagship A90J, Sony's Brava XR processor seemed to apply some dynamic edge enhancement at all times even with neutral sharpening and reality creation turned off. While most people would probably be taken by this perceptibly sharper appearance particularly for interlaced broadcast programs, be them in standard definition or high definition, occasionally we found that Blu-rays which already contain densely packed detail would look a touch over-processed, prompting us to dial sharpness all the way down to minimum, even though technically sharpness 50 was neutral on test patterns. For video-based interlaced content, Jaggi's suppression was decent but not best in class, betraying some jagged edges on the third bouncing bar. With film mode enabled, the Sony A80J correctly detected and processed 3 2 and 2 2 cadences on these clips from the HQV benchmark disk. In terms of chroma bandwidth, 
Engaging game and graphics mode would restore full chroma bandwidth on this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Mansell HD benchmark disk. The smooth gradation decontouring filter can be used to reduce in-content posterization particularly in bit-starved content. But don't go too high or you'll start losing fine detail, culminating in a beauty filter effect. Bright uniformity was excellent on our 65-inch A80J review sample, exhibiting no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting as we cycle through full field gray slides. In this scene from our planet on Netflix, there's the faintest of Venetian blind effect which wasn't as noticeable as that observed on EVO panels and didn't bother us at all in real-world viewing. Dark uniformity was very good by WRGB OLED standards too, with some vertical streaks and side vignetting only starting to appear at 4% video stimulus and below. For HDR, peak brightness measured 630 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 135 nits full fill. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at 98% HUV, while red 2020 coverage was 73%. Although a peak brightness of 630 nits sounds low on paper, Sony's Bravia XR processing and dynamic tone mapping meant that the HDR presentation on the Sony A80J frequently looked as bright, if not occasionally brighter, than 2021 OLED TVs from rival manufacturers, helped in no small part by the TV's ability to depict very bright HDR elements in a more saturated manner without suffering from as much white subpixel dilution as what's normally seen on WRGB OLEDs. Interestingly, we noticed that our 65-inch A80J review sample took slightly longer to recover from image retention on screen than other 2021 OLED TVs, which we verified by displaying a 10% window at full blast in HDR for 10 seconds, then switching to a full field gray slide. It is nothing to be concerned of, just an observation that made us wonder if the A80J's OLED panel has a somewhat different makeup, especially considering its semi-matte anti-glare coating. Otherwise, the A80J continued Sony's tradition of delivering class-leading native 10-bit gradation, rendering the skies of the Martian with less posterization than other non-Sony OLEDs, to the extent that it's not even necessary to engage the smooth gradation decontouring filter when watching pristine, high bitrate content. Alongside the flagship A90J, the A80J is the first Sony OLED to support TV-LED Dolby Vision, allowing Dolby Vision 4K Blu-rays to be presented with greater accuracy and impact than what player-led Dolby Vision is capable of. In game mode, input lag measured 16 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, halving to 8 milliseconds at 120 frames per second. Two HDMI 2.1 inputs are provided, namely HDMI 3 and HDMI 4, each supporting the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. Note that HDMI 3 is also the eARC port, so if you wish to use eARC for lossless audio pass-through, you'll only be left with one usable HDMI 2.1 socket on HDMI 4. Our Sony A80J review unit is still awaiting a firmware update to unlock VRR and ALRM functionalities, but if you enable auto picture mode, the TV would automatically kick into game mode when playing games on PlayStation consoles including the PS5. Due to limitations of the MediaTek MT5895 SoC implemented on all Sony HDMI 2.1 TVs to date, 4K 120fps HDR games would exhibit some posterization, for example in the skies of Dirt 5 in high frame rate mode, which could only be largely eradicated by setting smooth gradation to high, but this would lead to an overly filtered, lossy appearance. Again, the MediaTek SoC prevents 4K 120Hz and Dolby Vision from being used together, Selecting the first enhanced option within the HDMI signal format submenu would enable FRL or fixed rate link signaling for 4K 120Hz, but disable Dolby Vision support, as you can see from the 4K TV details information screen on the Xbox Series X. If we go into the HDMI signal format menu again and switch to the enhanced format Dolby Vision setting, then go back to the Xbox and check the 4K TV details screen, you can see that Dolby Vision Gaming is now supported, but capped at 4K 60Hz. Furthermore, like all Sony televisions, the Bravia A80J doesn't offer a separate Dolby Vision game mode, which means you will have to put up with higher input lag when playing Dolby Vision games, making it a no-go for most hardcore gamers. Proper HGIG support is also absent on the Sony A80J, although as a workaround, you can turn off HDR tone mapping which will result in a 1000 nit hard clip at source, then calibrate the HGIG metadata values on the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, 
after which you should set HDR tone mapping to gradation preferred for more accurate PQ EOTF tracking when you are playing an HDIG compliant game. Design wise, the OLED screen is supported on a pair of cuboid feet, which can be repositioned inwards to be placed on a narrower AV rack or propped up to accommodate a soundbar, allowing you to stuff your unit between the legs. Note that the front coating on the 65-inch A80J is different from other 2021 OLED TVs we've tested, featuring a semi-matte treatment which attenuated reflections effectively, but also lowered perceived contrast in the presence of ambient light compared with the glossy finish implemented on other 2021 OLED televisions, including the 77-inch version of the A80J, although fortunately there's no change in picture quality when watched in a dark room. The connections are found at the left rear of the television, including 4 HDMI inputs, of which HDMI 3 and HDMI 4 are the HDMI 2.1 ports, with a full bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second according to the edit read by the excellent Meridio 7G signal generator. The Sony A80J ships with a standard black remote control with lackluster tactile feedback, instead of the premium backlit remote supplied with the flagship A90J. The onboard Acoustic Surface Audio Plus speakers sounded very good by television standards, and in fact better than the 55-inch A90J we tested two months ago, probably because the larger screen size of 65 inches naturally lent itself to a wider soundstage, as well as more precise sound localization, for example during this sequence from Arrival, where news readers popped up at different areas on screen. Let's sum up. The Sony A80J inherits many strengths of the flagship A90J Master Series OLED, which is hardly surprising given that they share the same Bravia XR processor. Compared to last year's A8H and A9G, the Bravia A80J delivers cleaner near blacks with significantly less flashing artifacts, more impactful HDR driven by Bravia XR processing, TV LED rather than player LED Dolby Vision, even sharper upscaling, more granular film mode or Cinemotion control, and of course, HDMI 2.1 support. The step-up A90J still has the edge in several aspects, thanks to its latest, more efficient OLED panel and additional metallic heatsink. But for the budget conscious, the Sony A80J represents a very appealing package. You can basically go up one size class for a similar price to the A90J, while still getting 80-90% to of the picture quality goodness depending on your tolerance towards the semi-matte screen coating on the 55-inch and 65-inch A80J, which dilutes contrast slightly when hit by light in a bright room. Despite its iffy 4K 120Hz HDR VR support for playing next-gen games, the Sony A80J outperforms every other 2021 OLED in its price bracket size for size in terms of motion handling, native gradation and HDR impact, and so it earns our highly recommended award. For more of our technical TV reviews, please click here for our playlist, and I will see you in the next video.